This is a video walkthrough of ACERA's active or deferred member beneficiary designation form, and this video highlights its new features. This form is for active members of ACERA, which is members who are currently working for one of ACERA's participating employers. This form is also for deferred members, which is members who have stopped working for one of ACERA's participating employers and have not yet retired from ACERA. Now to give you some context for this form, as an active or deferred ACERA member, there are certain benefits that will be paid in the event of your death. And this form allows you to designate one or more beneficiaries to receive those benefits. This form was redesigned in March of 2024, and there are a couple of new features on it. The first is the ability to leave increased benefits to your beneficiaries by making an advanced death benefit election in section four. The second new feature is the ability to name a custodian for benefits if you're naming a minor as your beneficiary. Now, before we get started, um, I want you to take note that this form will void and replace any prior nomination of beneficiaries that you've made. But that's okay because you're using it to update your beneficiary designations. Okay, let's get started. Section one goes into greater detail about the purpose of this form. So feel free to read through that. It also gives you a link to learn more about your death benefits by visiting acera.org slash death. So scrolling down to section two. In section two, you fill out information about you, including your name, social security number, address, birth date, phone numbers, and email address, as well as your marital status and the name and email address of your spouse or domestic partner if you have one. Now take note that this form is electronically fillable, so you can type your information into the form on your device. If you're looking at this form on our website, make sure that you download the form to your device before you start filling it out, and that way you can save changes that you make to the form. Okay, scrolling down to the next page, section three. Section three allows you to name one or more beneficiaries to receive your death benefits in the event of your death. Give as much information about your beneficiaries as you can give us, including name, social security number, date of birth, contact info, and their relationship to you. Now, if you don't have all the information handy at the time you wanna submit the form, you can still submit the form if you need to update your beneficiary. The minimum information we need for each beneficiary is the name, the relationship to you, and the percentage of the benefit you want to leave to this beneficiary. So regarding what to put into the percentage of benefit field, if you're naming one beneficiary, just put 100%. If you're naming more than one beneficiary, you need to put in a percentage of the total benefit that you want to leave to each beneficiary. So you would do those in these fields here. And all the percentages in the primary beneficiary section should add up to 100%, which is what this graphic is telling you. So for example, if you have two beneficiaries, you may want to leave them each 50% or some other combination that adds up to 100%. Now scrolling down to the next page, take note that there are three sets of primary beneficiary designation fields. And um, the third set is on this next page. And if you need to name more than three beneficiaries, just go ahead and contact us and we can provide you with an addendum to complete. Now, one more thing I wanna point out about the primary beneficiary section is this sidebar. If you're planning on naming a charity, trust, or an estate as your beneficiary, Go ahead and follow the link, acera.org slash charity, to find instructions on how to complete the form. Now, if you're planning on naming a minor as your beneficiary, it's important for you to read the instructions at acera.org slash minors. Okay, scrolling down to the next section. Section 3B. Okay, Section 3B allows you to name one or more contingent beneficiaries to receive your death benefits in case all your primary beneficiaries fail to qualify to receive benefits. 
And a common reason that benefits might go to a contingent beneficiary would be that your primary beneficiary died before you did and you didn't name a new primary beneficiary before your death. So that's why it's important to name a contingent beneficiary. The contingent beneficiary section also gives you three sets of fields to name three different contingent beneficiaries. Otherwise, it's very similar to the primary beneficiary section, and all the same information applies, including the instructions for naming a charity, trust, estate, or minor. Scrolling down to section four. Section four allows you to make a, an advance death benefit election. If you die before you retire, the advanced death benefit election authorizes a SARA to choose the maximum lifetime continuance available to your designated beneficiary as compared to if you were to die without making this election. Now there's a lot of information on this page as you can see, and you're probably going to want to read through it. But the bottom line for this section is that one, this election may result in greater benefits for the beneficiary you designated above in section three, and two, there's really no downside to making this selection, so go ahead and check the box. On yours, the box will be unchecked. You just go ahead and check it. Now, if you want to learn more about um, how this election will provide or could provide greater benefits to your beneficiaries, visit the link provided, which is acera.org slash ADV, and that's V like in Victor. Now, one more thing to note at the bottom of this page is that after you file this beneficiary designation form, if you get married or divorced or you enter into a domestic partnership or dissolve a domestic partnership or you have a child or adopt a child, the advanced death benefit election may be invalidated. So if any of those events occur, all you need to do is file another active or deferred member beneficiary designation form, which is this form that we're filling out right now, and you just re-elect the advanced death benefit election and submit the form and you're golden. Scrolling down to the next section, section five. So in section five, if you have a spouse, state registered domestic partner, or Alameda County domestic partner, which if you work for Alameda County as a domestic partner that you've declared to your employer on an affidavit, you need your spouse or domestic partner to sign this section if you have one. And you'll notice, if you click in here, that there's actually no electronic signature field on the form in this section. And that is because you can't sign this form electronically. So what you need to do is complete the form electronically as much as you can, so you can type in most of the fields except for the signatures. You print it out, and then you do all the necessary signatures in ink. Now, if you don't have a spouse or domestic partner, or you do, but you're gonna submit the form without their signature in that section, you need to make a declaration down here by checking one of these boxes. And then, after you check the box, you need to sign at the bottom of the page. Now, if your spouse or domestic partner signs above, you don't need to make a declaration. And scrolling down, that brings us to the final section, section six, which is simply your signature confirming the beneficiary designations shown on this form. And again, you're gonna have to print out the form and sign in ink. Okay, so how do you submit the form? Well, there's some instructions on the next page. And this page gives you four options. Option number one, is that you can scan your form and upload it to a SARA. And you do this by printing the completed form out and signing it, and then you need to scan it in after you've printed it and signed it. And there's two ways you can scan it in. One is to use the free Adobe Scan app. And you do that on your smartphone. So what you do is you visit acera.org slash scan, and there's a link there where you can uh, get the app and install it on your smartphone. And then there's a tutorial on that page at a sarah.org slash scan, there's a tutorial video on how to use the scan app. And with the app, you're basically using your phone's camera as a scanner, and the Adobe scan app creates a single PDF that you can provide to Acera. Now, alternatively, 
you could just use a physical scanner to create the PDF. Okay, now once you've scanned in your completed and signed form into a PDF, you can upload it by logging into your Acera account at acera.org slash login and clicking the Upload Documents tool. This is the most secure way to provide us the electronic version of the form. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can just email the PDF to us at info at acera.org. So scanning and uploading is your first option. Your second option is to print out your form, sign it, and place it in a county quick code envelope known as QIC and send it to Acera at our quick code, which is 22901. Your third option is to print out your form, sign it, and fax it to us at 510-268-9574. And your fourth option is to print it out, sign it, and mail it to us at 475 14th Street, Suite 1000, Oakland, California, 94612. Now, if you have any questions as you're filling out the form, don't hesitate to contact us by visiting acera.org contact.